Hi friends, welcome to all. In this video, we are going to discuss CCNA version 7 packet tracer activity. Investigate the TCP bar IP and OSI models in action. Before coming to it, friends, if you are watching our channel first time or if you like to get these type of technical videos in future, consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to enable that bell icon near to the subscribe button so that you will get notification message whenever we upload a new video. And if you like to get any technical support or if you like to contact our team, you can visit our website. Link I given in the description. Now, coming back to our packet tracer activity. Uh, in this activity, we will examine HTTP web traffic. Then we will display elements of the TCP bar IP protocol suit. Here we can see the intention of this uh, packet tracer activity. This simulation activity is intended to provide a foundation for understanding the TCP bar IP protocol suit and the relationship to the OSI model. Simulation mode allows you to view the data contents being sent across the network at each layer. As data moves through the network, it is broken down into smaller pieces and identified so that the pieces can be put back together when they arrive at the destination. Each piece is assigned a specific name that is called Protocol Data Unit PDU, and associated with a specific layer of the TCP bar IP and OSI models. Packet Tracer Simulation Mode enables you to view each of the layers and the associated PDU. The following steps lead the user through the process of requesting a web page from a web server by using the web browser application available on a client PC. Even though much of the information displayed will be discussed in more detail later, this is an opportunity to explore the functionality of Packet Tracer and will be able to visualize the encapsulation process. Okay, just we are going to understand TCP bar IP and OSI model. We will go through the instructions. First of all, examine HTTP web traffic. In part 1 uh, of this activity, we will use packet tracer simulation mode to generate a web traffic and examine HTTP. So firstly, we have to uh, switch from real time to simulation mode. In the lower right corner of the packet tracer interface, are buttons that toggle between real-time and simulation mode. Yes, we will see that. PT, that is packet tracer, always starts in real-time mode in which networking protocols operate with realistic timings. However, a powerful feature of a packet tracer allows the user to stop time by switching to simulation mode. In simulation mode, packets are displayed as animated envelopes. Time is uh, event-driven and the user can step through networking events. Yes, this is the advantage of uh, using a simulation mode in a packet tracer. Okay, then how we can uh, switch from real-time to simulation? Uh, here we can see that. Click the simulation mode icon uh, to switch from real-time mode to uh, simulation mode. Coming to our uh, packet tracer, uh, here we can see uh, at the right side, two buttons, so real-time and simulation. By default, we can see it's in real-time. So, to go to uh, simulation mode from uh, real time, uh, just click on this uh, simulation. And now we can see we are in uh, simulation mode. Then we have to select HTTP from the event list filters. Okay, that can be done. Before that, we will uh, read this uh, info. HTTP may already be the only visible event. If necessary, click the Edit Filters button at the bottom of the simulation panel to display the available visible events. Toggle the Show All bar None checkbox and notice how the checkboxes switch from Unchecked to Checked or Checked to Unchecked depending on the current state. OK, click the Show All bar None checkbox until all boxes are cleared and then select HTTP from the uh, misc tab of the edit filters window click the uh, x in the upper right hand corner uh, of the window to close the edit filters window the visible event should now only display http okay now we will come to our packet tracer and here we can see our simulation panel 
and uh, here we can see uh, the event list filters and here we have uh, only http as the visible events okay now consider if you have more number of visible events in this uh, simulation panel then you can click on this uh, show all bar and none so i'm going to click on it so here we can see now it shows none suppose again we are going to click on it we can see all the events so here now we will click uh, again on this uh, show all bar none so now it shows none okay now we will add only the required events uh, from this edit filters click on this edit filters and here we can see for uh, three tabs ipv4 ipv6 and misc so we will click on this misc and we will uh, search for http it's here so we will uh, check this uh, checkbox then we can uh, close this uh, event list then here we can see event list filters visible events only http okay in the next step we are going to generate a web traffic that is http traffic right currently the simulation panel is empty so here we can see our simulation panel uh, this event list is empty there are five columns listed across the top of the event list within the simulation panel as the traffic is generated and the step through events appear in the list okay we will go to simulation panel and we can see those uh, five columns listed it's here this time in seconds last device at device then we can see type now here they given a note the web server and the web client are displayed in the left pane. The panels can be adjusted in size by hovering next to the scroll bar and dragging left or right when the double-headed arrow appears. Yes, coming to our packet tracer, here we can see our work area. Here is our web server and the web client. And we can adjust uh, the simulation panel. If you come here, so we can adjust like this okay okay now click web client in the far left pane then click the desktop tab and then click the web browser icon to open it then in the url field we have to enter www.osi.local and then click go okay before going to our web client we will copy this url right now we will go to our web client and here we can see web client window we will go to a desktop tab it's here now we will search for the web browser okay here is our web browser then here we can see our url field we will paste our url here then we will press go okay we click on go but there is no event uh, in the event list we will go through the next step here okay because time in a simulation mode is event driven yes already we told that we must use the capture bar forward button to display network events the capture forward button is located at the left hand side of the blue band that is below the topology window of the three button there it is the one of the right now coming to our packet tracer here we can see our blue band it's here uh, below our uh, uh, topology window and here we can see uh, three buttons so in that we can see this is a capture or forward so it shows the pop-up capture then forward or we can press uh, alt c from keyboard now click capture bar forward four times there should be four events in the event list we will do that coming to our blue band we are going to click on this capture or forward four times one two three and four now look at the web client web browser page did anything change okay we will check that we will click on this web client oh here we can see our web page 
uh, it shows a web server you have successfully accessed the home page for web server now click the first colored square box under the event list type column it may be necessary to expand the simulation panel or use the scroll bar directly below the event list so coming to our simulation panel here we can use this scroll bar so that we can go to type and here we can see a blue color square box uh, we will click on this square box so we get a PDU information at device web client window the PDU information at a device web client window displays yes that's correct so in this window there are only two tabs such as OSI model and outbound PDU details here we can see those tabs OSI model and outbound PDU details because this is the start of the transmission as more events are examined there will be uh, three tabs displayed adding a tab for inbound PDU details okay that's good and here we can see uh, in this PDU information at device we have only uh, two tabs OSI model and outbound PDU details and we may see this inbound PDU details in PDU information later okay so when an event is the last event in the stream of traffic only the OSI model and inbound PDU details tabs are displayed okay that's great now ensure that the OSI model tab is selected yes now we are in the OSI model tab under the outliers column click layer 7 so uh, here we can see two columns in layers and out layers just we will go to out layers and we will select this layer 7 just we will click on this layer 7 what information is listed in the numbered steps directly below the in layers and out layers boxes for layer 7 so here we can see uh, the information uh, regarding this layer 7 it's the HTTP client sends a HTTP request to the server. Next is what is the destination port value for layer 4 under the out layers column. Okay, coming to our PDU information at device web client. Out layers, here we can see layer 4. And here we can see our DST port. That means it's destination port number. It's 80. Yes. So this port 80 is the well-known port for the protocol HTTP. Next is what is the uh, destination IP value for a layer 3 under the out layers column. We can check that in out layers so here we can see layer 3 and we can see destination IP address it's 192.168.1.254. So this is the IP address of our uh, web server. Next is uh, what information is displayed at layer 2 under the out layers column. So coming to out layers, so here we can see layer 2 and we can see Ethernet 2 header. Here we can see a uh, source and a destination uh, MAC address. Now click the outbound PDU details tab. Information listed under the PDU formats is reflective of the layers within the TCP bar IP model right so we will go to outbound PDU details here we can see that and here we can see all the details Ethernet 2 and here we can see preamble destination uh, address it's a MAC address type data FCS and here we can see IP header details version 4 anyway we'll see all these uh, in a later chapters and here we can see uh, TCP source port destination port and here we can see uh, in OSI model the layer 2 here we can see layer 2 Ethernet 2 then here we can see layer 3 IP header so here we can see IP header Then in layer 4 we can see uh, TCP source port and destination port so here we here we can see the details 
source port, destination port, sequence number, acknowledgement, the window size, checksum, etc. And here we can see it's a HTTP request, HTTP data, accept a language, okay, whatever, right. So it's a layer 7. We will go through this note. The information listed under the Ethernet 2 section of the Outbound PDU Details tab provides even more detailed information than is listed under Layer 2 on the OSI model tab. Yes, we already told that. Uh, here we can see in a Layer 2, they are given uh, only the source and destination MAC address. And we can see the detailed Ethernet 2 header in this Outbound PDU Details here. The outbound PDU details provides more descriptive and detailed information. The values under uh, dust MAC, that is a destination MAC address, and SRC MAC, that is a source MAC address. Within the Ethernet 2 section of the PDU details appear on the OSA model tab under layer 2, but are not identified as uh, such questions. Okay, what is the common information listed under the IP section of PDU details as compared to the information listed under the OSA model tab? With which layer is it associated? Okay, here we can see uh, in outbound PDU details, here we can see IP and here we can see uh, SRC IP and uh, DHT IP, that means the source IP address and destination IP address. So coming to our OSI model, so here we can see uh, source IP address and destination IP address and it is in the layer 3. Next is what is the common information listed under the TCP section of PDU details as compared to the information listed under the OSI model tab and with which layer is it associated. Okay, where is our TCP? Here we can see uh, TCP and we can see the informations source port, destination port, sequence number, acknowledgement, etc. So now coming to OSI model. In layer 4, we can see TCP source port and destination port. So this is common uh, source port and destination port and the layer is layer 4. Next is what is the host listed under the HTTP section of the PDU details? What layer would this information be associated with under the OSI model tab? Okay, coming to our outbound PDU details. Here we can see HTTP request. And uh, we can see host www.osi.local. And here we can see it's associated with uh, layer 7. Now click the next colored square box under the event list, type column. Only layer 1 is active, not grayed out. The device is moving the frame from the buffer and placing it onto the network. Okay, we will close this PDU information at device web client and then we will go to the next square box. It's your second one. We will click on it. And here in OSI model, uh, in outlayers, we can see only one layer is active, that is layer 1, ports of fast Ethernet 0. Okay, right. Next, advance to the next HTTP type box within the event list and click the colored square box. This window contains both in layers and out layers. Notice the direction of the arrow directly under the in layers column. It is pointing upward, indicating the direction of the data is traveling. Scroll through these layers, making note of the items previously viewed. At the top of the column, the arrow points to the right. This denotes that the server is now sending the information back to the client. Okay, right, that can be done. We will close this PDU information. Now we will go to the next square box. Uh, here we can see that. We will click on it. And here we can see uh, in layers and out layers. Yes, so here as they mentioned, we can see these uh, in layers and out layers. And here we can see under these in layers an arrow mark uh, pointing upward. And this is the direction of the uh, data traveling. 
uh, here it travels from layer 1 to layer 7 and here in out layers we can see it's from layer 7 to layer 1 because here we can see uh, that arrow uh, shows downward also in this video information at device web server uh, we can see three tabs OSI model inbound PDU details and outbound PDU details okay now just we will go through the same layers and here we can see a layer 7 the server receives a HTTP request okay server received an HTTP request and here we can see uh, layer 4 TCP source port is 1025 and destination port is 80 then in layer 3 here we can see IP header source uh, IP address it's 192.168.1.1 uh, this is the IP address of our web client okay then we can see destination IP address it's 192.168.1.254 uh, this is the IP address of our web server and here we can see a layer 2 Ethernet 2 header also we can see layer 1 uh, port now just we will go through out layers here we can see layer 7 so the server sends back a HTTP replay to the client okay so he is going to send a replay back to a client then here we can see uh, layer 4 uh, TCP source port now we can see this uh, TCP source port is 80 and destination port is 1025 so here we can see uh, in in layers uh, uh, source port was 1025 now in out layers uh, source port is uh, 80 so it's just uh, flipped next is a uh, layer 3 uh, here we can see source and destination IP address so now here we can see the source IP address is 192.168.1.254 this is the IP address of our server then we can see destination IP address it's 192.168.1.1 this is the IP address of our uh, uh, this uh, web client yes because this uh, web server is going to send back HTTP replay to this uh, client hence the web server will be the source and web client will be the destination now here in a layer 2 we can see a third 2 header and here we can see the difference uh, from this in layers it's uh, just flipped because now this is a source and this is a MAC uh, I mean a destination MAC address next we have a question here comparing the information displayed in the in layers column with that of the out layers column what are the major differences yes here we have seen this uh, uh, source and destination IP address uh, also the source and destination MAC address uh, swapped now click the inbound and outbound PDU details tab review the PDU details okay here we can see the detailed informations about this in layers and out layers in this inbound PDU details and outbound PDU details so here we can see inbound PDU details Ethernet and here we can see IP header source IP address and destination IP address also here we can see TCP HTTP request now we can go to outbound PDU details the detailed information of out layers Ethernet 2 IP TCP source port destination port and here we can see HTTP response by the server uh, to our uh, web client HTTP data connection clause content length and here is our server and finally click the last colored square box under the info column how many tabs are displayed with this event explain coming to our simulation panel here we can see our last square box so we will click on it and here we can see uh, two tabs 
OSI model and inbound PDU details. Sure, in this PDU information, we can see we have only in layers. That means this uh, web server uh, replied back to this uh, web client and uh, he, re he receives that uh, reply from this uh, web server. And there won't be any further communication from web client to web server. So uh, we have only in layers. Uh, so we get uh, this uh, inbound PDU details and we don't have out layers. So now we will move to the next part, uh, display elements of the TCP bar IP protocol suit. In part 2 of this activity, we will use the packet tracer simulation mode to view and examine some of the other protocols uh, comprising of TCP bar IP suit. Coming to step 1, view additional events. Close any open PDU information windows. Okay, that can be done. In the event list filters, Visible event section, click show all bar none. What additional event types are displayed? Okay, coming to our simulation panel, here we can see show all bar none. We will click on it. So here we can see it shows none. Again, we will click on it. And here we can see many uh, visible events. And these extra entries play various roles within the TCP bar IP suite. Address resolution protocol that is ARP requests MAC addresses for a destination house. DNS is responsible for converting a name, for example, www.osi.local to an IP address. The additional TCP events are responsible for connecting, agreeing on communication parameters, and disconnecting the communication sessions between the devices. These protocols have been mentioned previously and will be further discussed as the course progresses. Currently, there are over 35 possible protocols, event types, available for capture uh, within Packet Tracer. Now, click the first DNS event in the type column. Explore the OSI model and PDU details tab and note the encapsulation process. As you look at the OSI model tab with the layer 7 highlighted, a description of what is occurring is listed directly below the in layers and out layers. Uh, it will show like this. The DNS client sends a DNS query to the DNS server. This is very useful information to help understand what is occurring during the communication process. Okay, now we will have a look for this DNS event in our simulation panel. So here we can see DNS, we will click on this square box and here we can see PDU information at device, a web client. And now uh, we highlighted this as a layer 7 DNS. And here we can see the description of this layer 7 DNS. The DNS client sends a DNS query to the DNS server. Uh, this is what they said here. Now click the outbound PDU details tab. So coming to PDU information, here we can see outbound PDU details. So what information is listed in the name field in the DNS query section? Okay, we will search for this DNS query section and we will find the name field. And here we can see DNS query. And here is name. So it says www.osi.local. Next is click the last DNS info colored square box in the event list. At which device was the PDU captured? Okay, we will check that. We will close this PDU information and coming to our simulation panel and we will search for the last DNS here. DNS, yes, it's here, and we can see it's in the device web client. Okay, we will click on this square box, and here we can see our PDU information at device web client. Now, what is the value listed next to address in the DNS answer section of the inbound PDU details? So, here we will go to the tab inbound PDU details, it's here. Okay, now uh, we have to go to DNS answer. 
Oh, where is that? Uh, here we can see DNS answer. Then we will find out address. Here we can see an IP address uh, specified in this DNS answer. It's 192.168.1.254. This is the IP address of our web server. Next is uh, find the first HTTP event in the list and click the colored square box of the TCP event immediately following this event. Highlight layer 4 in the OSI model tab. So we will close this PDU information and we will uh, find HTTP event here. The first HTTP event. Here we can see the first HTTP event. Then we have to click the colored square box of the TCP event. Uh, immediately following this event. So here we can see that a TCP uh, just after this HTTP event. So we will click on this uh, TCP square box. Now we have to highlight layer 4. So here we can see layer 4 uh, in uh, OSI model. Next in the numbered list directly below the in layers and out layers, what is the information displayed under items 4 and 5? Here we can see the informations uh, 4 and 5. The TCP connection is uh, successful. The device set the connection state to established. TCP manages the connecting and disconnecting of the communications channel along with other responsibilities. This particular event shows that the communication channel has been established. Right. Next is click the last TCP event. Highlight layer 4 in the OSI model tab. Examine the steps listed directly below in layers and out layers. Right, we will close this PDU information, then we will search for the last TCP event in this simulation panel. So here we can see a TCP, we will click on this uh, square box. Then we have to highlight layer 4, so here we can see layer 4. And then we, we have to examine the steps listed directly below in layers and out layers. Here we can see that. The device receives a TCP acknowledgement segment on the connection 2192.168.1.1 on port 1025. Received segment information, the sequence number 104, uh, the ACK number 273 and the data length 20. The TCP segment has the expected peer sequence number. The device sets the connection state to closed. So what is the purpose of this event? based on the information provided in the last item in the list that is should be item 4 yes so here we have the answer the device sets the connection state to closed that means obviously this web server uh, closed its connection now there are uh, challenge questions this simulation provided an example of a web session between a client and a server on a local area network that is LAN the client makes a request to specific services running on the server. The server must be set up to listen on specific ports for a client request. Hint, look at layer 4 in the OSI model tab for port information. Okay, right. Based on the information that was inspected during the packet tracer capture, what port number is the web server listening on for the web request? Yeah, already we discussed this. Uh, for HTTP, usually we use uh, the uh, well-known port 80. We can verify that. Just we will go to our simulation panel and uh, we will search for the HTTP. Here we can see we will click on this HTTP and we will go to uh, layer 4. And here we can see the destination port uh, that is uh, going to this web server. It's a port 80. So this is the uh, well-known port for uh, HTTP. Next is, uh, what port is the web server listening on for a DNS request? Okay, we can search for the DNS. So here we can see uh, web client DNS. We'll click on it. And here we can see destination port. It's 53. Okay, that's all in this packet tracer activity uh, investigate the tcp bar ip and osi models in action 
now dear friends if you have any doubt any suggestions please comment below or you can go to our website and you can contact us and if you like our video give a thumb and share with all your friends we will meet again with the next video thank you